Good day, peoples. It's Pastor Kevin here bringing you today's daily devotion. We've been going through this series about control. And today, I think I might be backpedaling a little bit compared to where I was last time. Um, But I want to give you a little, just a little snippet of a story about a guy named Joab. And this is one of the commanders of the uh, military under David. And he he has kind of a, he's a very loyal dude, but there's like a checkered relationship there because he didn't always do the right thing. Um, so let's just say he's he's flawed. David's not very happy with him ultimately at the end of his life. But there's this little story of he and his brother. And I want you to just hear this because I think, you know, we've been talking about those who who tend to control things and those who are feeling controlled. Uh, and I think this is kind of maybe a happy medium between those two. I mean, these are military guys, so they make plans, they set strategies and so forth. You'll see that happen, but there's an ultimate, um, uh, there's an ultimate sense of them choosing to do the right thing. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean here. We're going to be in second Samuel, and this is in chapter 10, starting with verse nine. And it says this, uh, when Joah, okay, wait, let me step back for a second. You need to know this. Uh, so this is in a moment where uh, David has, he's unified the kingdoms and he's doing really, you know, the people love him and so forth. And he goes to try to make amends. One of the key key relationships he had with the leader of Syria, uh, he, the, he's died and his son has taken over and he goes to send envoys to them basically to, to like, basically uh, say that we're sorry for your loss and want to make sure you keep that relationship. Well, they don't respond well, and they ended up disgracing the envoys that were sent. So David is upset, rightfully so. And Syria, knowing that that's happening, the leader of Syria, goes and makes a deal with the Ammonites, and they come against Israel. And this is in that situation. So two nations coming against Israel, and the head of the military in Israel is uh, Joab, and his brother uh, um, Abishai is one of the others. So this is where the story comes from. So back to our story. Sorry about that. So this is uh, 2 Samuel 10, starting at verse 9, and it says this. When Joab, Joab saw that the battle was set against him, both in front and in the rear, This is where we have Syrians on one side, Ammonites on the other. He chose some of the best men of Israel and arrayed them against the Syrians. The rest of his men he put in the the charge of Abishai, his brother, and he arrayed them against the Ammonites. And he said, If the Syrians are too strong for me, then you shall help me. But if the Ammonites are too strong for you, then I will come and help you. Be of good courage and let us be courageous for our people and for the cities of our God. And may the Lord do what seems good to him. So Joab and the people who were with him drew near to battle against the Syrians, and they fled before him. And when the Ammonites saw that the Syrians fled, they likewise fled before Abishai and entered the city. Then Joab returned from fighting against the Ammonites and came to Jerusalem. So you see the situation. You can clearly see a strategy by Joab, right? Okay, we're going we're gonna to push on these two fronts. And if I'm having trouble, I'm going to need you to help me. And if you're having trouble, I'm going to need to help you. So it's not a perfect strategy by any military sense. <laughs> That's not the point. The point is, is that Joab is saying, okay, here's the plan. But did you see what he ultimately says? He says, okay, if this happens, then so be it. And if that happens, so be it. But be of good courage and let God's will. So he says, may the Lord do what seems good to him. Ultimately, Joab would, would default and say, you know what? We're trying to do this for the people of God. We're doing this for Israel and we're doing this for the cities of God. But ultimately, let the Lord do what is good to him. That's this this idea. And and I wish I I would do this more. And I'm hoping that you guys catch what I'm trying to say here. The ability to say, I'm going to make my plans, hopefully for the correct purposes, for the right reasons. And I'm going to give the ultimate over to God. That whatever God seems to do, want, if whatever he sees is the right thing, I'm going to ultimately submit to that. And that's what I'm reading. So, and, and again, I don't know what Joab really meant when he's doing all these things, but his words seem pretty clear that ultimately he's saying, let the Lord do, let, let the Lord's will be done. It's almost like another that we've heard, right? And this is like, you could take that right to, to Jesus in, in Gethsemane and saying, you know, this cup that you've put before me, it's, it's a lot. It's asking a lot. And really, if there's another way, please choose that way. But 
Not my will, but your will be done. We as Christians need this. We need this attitude. It's not that we... We don't just give up planning. We don't just give up strategies. We don't just give up making any correct decisions on what we think might be right, but ultimately submitting it all to God. When when we don't have an absolute, like God says, do this or do that, then I think we should be saying, look, Lord, here's my plan. I don't know how it's going to ultimately turn out. I can't do that. That's your neighborhood. That's how. That's where you exist in that in that place of knowing everything. I don't. But here's what I want. I know that you are God. And I want to submit this plan before you. Your, let you determine what good should happen, regardless of what that means about me. Do you do that very much? I wish I did that more. Giving over like all of my plans and saying, you know what, Lord, I've got this plan and maybe this will turn out and maybe this will be good for me or my family or whatever. But ultimately... I think it's better to say, yeah, I'm going to plan the good for me and my family and what's right for the church and people that I I spend time with mentoring and counseling. I'm going to make my plan. But ultimately, Lord, your will must be done. Let I want you to decide the good. Let it be good to you. I I ask, um, I want to pray that I would do that more. And I would pray that you would do that more. Because ultimately, we have all these ideas. We, we, you know, if we're really honest, we come to this, and most of us think our strategy is best. We have the right answer, and those type of things. And maybe some of you don't, but I mean, I think we do approach things in some ways like that. It's like, okay, I, I know what I need to do here. But what if we actually took a moment, not that we stopped those plans, not that we stopped those strategies, but we simply say, but you know what, Lord, I know you know everything. I know you're all powerful, and I know you are ultimately good. And I want this to be a part of your ultimate good. Would you do that with me? Would you try to do that this week? Make an attempt in your prayers, in your decisions, in your workplace, in your family, that you would ultimately say, I'm going to plan things out with the hopes that I am making the right kingdom decisions, decisions that align with my king who gave himself for me. And, but ultimately, I'm going to lay it at, at his feet and say, but your will be done. Whatever is best in your eyes, I want that to happen. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much. I thank you. I, I want to ask you for the ability, the, the, the ability to see and know that you are good such that we could trust you in the middle of this. You are all, we should be trusting you with everything. But I think all of us have this little part of our, ourselves that wants to, to plan and control things. And I just want to say, I I want you to be in control. I know you are, but my point is I want to submit control to you. I will make my plans to a point, but I will then submit them to you. Help me to do that through your spirit. Help the people listening do that. Um, We want to see your will be done. And and the, the truth is, Father, is that maybe some of those things that you would choose to do, we wouldn't agree with or we wouldn't want to happen, whatever. But we know that you're good, and that's, that's what we want to submit to. Help us to do that this day and every day because you are good and you have given yourself for us. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, see you next time.